afternoon or good evening wherever you may be and whatever time you may be listening to this. Today is Groundhog Day. I It's going to be interesting to see what the groundhog does, huh? It's such a cute little thing we do every year, but you'll be getting this later on. I am going to continue with the names of Jesus because it's such an awesome thing. So be sure and subscribe if you are net, not yet a subscriber so you get all the news on when Kona Face Center is doing anything. Be sure and check that little bell, because that helps. And thumbs up and listen all the way through, because that helps the logarithm. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I am continuing, and I believe this is the third week, on the names of Jesus. So I'm going to continue with King of the Ages, if you Write down so you could look it up later. Take a note that it's 1 Timothy 1 and 17. Now on to the King Eternal, Immortal, Invisible, the only wise God. Be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. He is the King Eternal, the King of the ages, the King who has always been and always will be. And that is so important. He is the King of the Jews. He's also king of the Gentiles, but in Matthew 2.2, 2, it says, saying, where is he that is born king of the Jews? And of course, they were talking about Jesus, Yeshua, Messiah. For we have seen his star in the east and are coming to worship him. Isn't that awesome? These wise men knew what to do. They knew how to read the sky, the constellations, and they weren't doing it for weird stuff like who you're going to marry or where you're going to live. They did it to visit the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Great I Am. All right, the next one is the King of the Saints. That's all of us who believe in him, and that's Revelation 15, 3. It's not the revelations of Jesus Christ. It's the revelation of Jesus Christ to John. And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb saying, Great and marvelous are your works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are your ways. Thou, it says in King James, you are King of Saints. Glory to God. He is, he makes us saints and then he is our king. He is the great lawgiver. And that's found in Isaiah 33 and 22. For the Lord is our judge. The Lord is our lawgiver. The Lord is our king. He will save us. What are the two laws to remember? We've gone over and over and over this, but we need to remember it always. We love God with all our being, with every part of us. We love God. And number two, we love as Jesus loved us. We love others as Jesus loved us. And all the commandments, all the law, all the statutes, everything that was ever stated is fulfilled in these two commands, according to our Lord. He is the Lamb of God. And I'm excited because we're going to have a Passover here at the church and if you're listening and you're from the church, be sure to sign up when we put out the sign-up sheet. And it's going to be just an awesome time on a Wednesday night. And I think it's April 5th. And I think that's the uh, Wednesday before Sunday where Resurrection Day, what the world calls Easter, is celebrated. And no, bunnies don't lay eggs. Not chicken eggs, for sure. All right, we're celebrating the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And he is called the Lamb of God in Revelation 13, 8, and of course, other places. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Do you realize what this is saying? That those that have not walked with Jesus, whose names are not written in eternity with him, 
there still every knee will bow, every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. My opinion on this, by the word of God, is that we should do it because we want to, not because we have to. Because I sure want to be with Jesus and all the believers for all eternity. Lamb of God, John 1 and 29. The next day, John sees Jesus coming to him and says, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And our Lamb did that. When Jesus went to the cross, when he was beaten and shed his blood, when he died up there in that cross and went into the pit of Hades and hell, I'll tell you what, he preached the gospel. He set captives free. Over 500 people were seen after his resurrection. He is the first and the last, the beginning and the end. And he gave testimony of who he was and he broke the assignment of death against those who believe and he broke the works of the enemy off of us who believe he is so good he's such a good God and he is called the leader and commander in Isaiah 55 4 and what it says there is behold I have given him for a witness to the people a leader and a commander to the people. And he is coming back in his rightful place to be the king of kings and lord of lords and be the commander and be the leader. And he is so full of love and so full of mercy and so full of peace. People, it is going to be the most exciting time. And many prophetic words have come. And many pastors that are preaching, that have been preaching the gospel, believe that the time is getting short, shorter than before, as we always say. He is the life, John 14, 6. Jesus says unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. There is no way, other way to Jesus. There is no other way. You can't work your way. You can't pray to another God. You can't make a statue and call it God or anything. The only way to the Father is through the Son. That's how it's set up. That's the reality. No other religion, nothing can conquer this feat except for believing in Jesus Christ. And he will lead us to Abba, our daddy, our father. All right. He is the light of the world. And if we could go to John 8 and 12. Then spoke Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. You know, we need light to be led. When it's pitch black, we need light so we can see. And he brings this incredible illumination because light comes from him. It comes from him. That's why there's going to be no nighttime in eternity. Because he's there. And, and the light is so supernaturally strong. It's just amazing. So remember that Jesus is the light of the world. He is also the lion of the tribe of Judah. It was set up by God for him to come through David's line of Judah, so he did. And he also came through the Levitical priesthood. If you go back and study, sometimes we don't like to read those first chapters in Matthew and Luke, I think and all the genealogy, but if we follow it and we go back to the Old Testament, we will see that the prophecies that were given about Jesus coming from the tribe of Judah came to pass at his birth. So Lion of the tribe of Judah from Revelation 5 and 5, And one of the elders says unto me, Weep not, behold, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Root of David. Isn't that interesting? The Root of David. David couldn't come without him. He's the root. He's the beginning. He's the creator. The root of David has prevailed to open the book and to lose the, the <laughs> loose, I'm sorry, to lose the seven seals thereof. That's when no one else in heaven can open the book and let the seals be you know, be broken apart. Only Jesus was holy. Only Jesus was pure. Only Jesus was sin free. And that's why, because all men, all women, all children have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, but our Yeshua Messiah, our wonderful Lord. And 
The next thing he is called is Lord of all. And that's from Acts 10 and 36. The word which God sent to the children of each Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. So even the word that was sent to the children of Israel back in Moses' day, he's the fulfillment of it all. He is the Lord of glory. And that comes from 1 Corinthians 2 and 8 for this scripture which none of the princes of the world knew, for they, if they had known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. And they treated him horribly. But he is the Lord of glory, and he is returning for people that are spotless and wrinkle-free. So let's be those people. Amen. He is the Lord of lords. There is no other Lord greater than Jesus. In fact, there really isn't any other Lord, even though some people are called lords. Lord of Lords, 1 Timothy 6.15, which in his times he shall show who is the blessed and only King of Kings and Lord of Lords. That's our God. That's our Jesus. He is the Lord of our righteousness. We're righteous because of him. We are made in his image. And because he's righteous, when we walk according to to his commands. Remember, love God, love everybody else. When we do that, we are the righteousness of him and he is our Lord, as, as it states in Jeremiah 23 and 6. In his days, Judah shall be saved, yea, and Israel shall dwell safely, yea, and this is his name whereby he shall be called the Lord our righteousness. Man, he is just so awesome. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for all that you did on our behalf. Thank you for what you continue to do being our advocate. Ah, another name of Jesus. He, is, he was a man of sorrows. It was sorrowful for him to come and to see the unbelief on this earth. It's sorrowful for him to know of unbelief on this earth. It was sorrowful for what the world did to him being the King of kings and Lord of lords, the light of the world. It says in Isaiah 53, 3, He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. He knows what it is to grieve people. If you're grieving, just cling on to Jesus because he understands. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. Remember the story with Peter? And he was despised, and we esteemed him not. When he deserves the most esteem of anybody. He is our mediator. 1 Timothy 2 and 5. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men. And it is the man, Christ Jesus, or Messiah Yeshua. He is the messenger of the covenant. He brought forth the covenant. Malachi 3.1 Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant whom you delight in. Behold, he shall come, says the Lord of hosts. Well, John the Baptist was the messenger before the messenger, but he's the real messenger. Amen. John played his part. We all are to play the parts that God gives us in this life. He is the Messiah. Daniel 9 and 25. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the prince, shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks. The, the street shall be built again and the wall even in troublesome times. So be expecting people. We are living in troublesome times. Be expecting. John 1 and 41. He first finds his own brother Simon and says unto him, We have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted, the Christ. This is interesting because this happened really pretty much long before, long before Peter says, You are the Christ. But he's telling his brother that we have found him. He is the mighty God, and that's from Isaiah 9, 6. And I have read the scripture several times because a lot of his names are in this scripture. And right now we're talking about the mighty God. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called 
Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. I want to thank you all for tuning in today. Next week I am going to continue and we may be close to finishing off the names of God. We'll see. And wherever we're at, we're at whatever the Holy Spirit wants to do. And I pray for each and every one of you. I pray that you will understand the love of God and who God is and how he can minister to you because he is all who we have stated he is because that's what the word says. And the word cannot lie. It is impossible because it is God. John 1, in the beginning, read it. Read over these scriptures. Declare it. Speak it. Understand who your Lord Jesus is. God bless each and every one of you, and I will see you next time. You alone, Lord, made me a brand new creation. It is only by your spirit.